Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at a live Linux distribution. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the recently released Gparted Live 0.31.0-1. So let's have a look. So Gparted Live 0.31.0-1 released just a few days ago. What is Gparted Live? Well, as the name suggests, uh, one of the tools on it, of course, is Gparted, which is a partition editor. Uh, basically, this particular distro, Gparted Live, is a Debian-based distro. It is designed to be run as a live CD or a live USB stick. Of course, these days, most people are probably using USB sticks rather than CDs. Uh, but it's small enough. I think the ISO is only 300 megs and some change, so you could actually put it on a CD. It'll fit on a CD. But uh, you use it as a live a live disk or a live USB stick, and you use it to help edit partitions, rescue files, rescue your system, uh, fix bootloader issues, that sort of thing. Uh, it's based on Debian. I um, believe it's based on Debian SID. Yeah, it's based on Debian SID, and it's using the latest Linux kernel. 4.15.4-1. Uh, it, it includes a variety of uh, of software included. Let's take a look at some of the software included here. Let me see if I can pull up the Gparted webpage. This is gparted.org. This is their uh, release notes, actually. Let me see if I can go to their home page. All right, yeah. So you can grow or shrink your C drive. So I guess uh, Gparted Live can be used to rescue, of, of course, Windows systems. Of course, I, I don't play around much in Windows, despite a recent video I did reviewing Windows 10. I, I really don't know anything about Windows. I would use this to rescue Linux systems, though. You can perform actions with partitions, such as create or delete, resize or move, check, label, set new UUID, copy and paste. You can ma manipulate file systems, such as extended 234, ButterFS, FAT16, FAT32, NTFS, RiserFS, XFS, etc. Requirements can be used, or, or excuse me, the requirements are that Gparted can be used on x86 or x86-64 based computers running Linux, Windows, or Mac OS X. A minimum of 256 megabytes of RAM is needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the live disk. Basically, I'm just going to boot directly off the ISO in a virtual machine. I'm going to review this inside VirtualBox. All right, so I've loaded up Gparted Live here inside a virtual machine. When you first boot up Gparted Live, you have a boot menu. The options are Gparted Live with default settings. Other modes of Gparted Live, local operating system in hard drive if available, or memtest. So I'm just going to go ahead and let, let VirtualBox capture my keyboard and mouse, and I'm going to boot directly into Gparted Live. And of course, we get some information here as it's booting about Spectre. Uh, it's already been patched for Meltdown and Spectre. Every Linux distribution by now should have been patched by for uh, Spectre and Meltdown mitigation. All right, we get some options here about selecting our key map. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the key map. It's probably already chosen English US. So uh, what language would I like to run Gparted in? U.S. English is number 33 in the list. I'm going to type 33, hit enter. Which mode do you prefer? Continue to start X to use Gparted autom automatically, run force video to config X manually, or enter command line prompt. Uh, yeah, I just want to start X. And this should load us into our live desktop environment. Not exactly sure what desktop environment. Uh, looks like Fluxbox. Okay, makes sense to keep the uh, the size of the ISO small enough to where it fits on a CD. Uh, Fluxbox is very small, lightweight, very fast, but functional. It's got a nice little panel down at the bottom. Of course, you have a right-click menu, standard uh, Fluxbox menu here. And as soon as you launch, I noticed automatically launching is the Gparted Partition Editor. So, uh, so Gparted Live, Gparted Partition Editor. 
Uh, on the desktop, we have options for uh, icons for screenshot. I'm not sure why you'd need a screenshot utility. I guess for support aspects, it's it's helpful to have a screenshot sometimes. Uh, we have our terminal, of course. We have a uh, screen resolution. We have a web browser. I always need a web browser for support aspects. And then we have an icon for network config. Um, do we have anything else in our right-click menu? We have terminals. We have LX terminal and the LX terminal with root privileges. Editors, we have LeafPad, Nano, and VI. File manager, do we have any file managers? We do. What file manager is this? This is PC Man FM. There are more tools, though, than what is in this uh, menu. Uh, these are just like the GUI programs. Uh, there's some. There's also some stuff that's not on here. Uh, well, for example, here's a file manager. MC was Midnight Commander. This is a terminal-based file manager. Really cool terminal-based file manager. We have Test Disk. Test Disk is a free data recovery software designed to help recover lost partitions. Again, uh, it's a system rescue uh, Linux distro. It's mainly geared toward rescuing files. So you're going to see a lot of stuff geared toward rescuing data and, of course, a lot of partition stuff. We have part image here, the partition to save and restore. I don't have any partitions to save and restore here. Again, I'm running this in a VM, so can't really test out... Uh, like any of the partitioning tools. We have a screenshot utility again. We have G Smart Control. Let's see. We go to about G Smart Control 1.1.3. Control and mon monitor hard disk smart data. All right. Under uh, network config, oh, I accidentally launched the web browser. What web browser is this? NetSurf 3.6, released on 19th November 2016. NetSurf is a small and fast web browser. So they're not using, you know, anything modern and, you know, no Firefox or Chrome or anything like that. Again, because this is designed to run as a live disk or a live USB stick, they're trying to keep the ISO very small. So very minimal web browser, NetSurf, but at least it is a graphical web browser. Uh, they probably do have some terminal-based web browsers such such as Lynx or eLynx or you know something like that on here too if you need it. We have network config. Uh, choose the mode to set up the network for this network card. Uh, I don't need to do any configuration of the network here. I'm on a wired connection by the way uh, on this. We have a calculator of course. This is Calcu. I've actually never heard of that calculator program. C A L C O O. A very ugly calculator, though. Not that you know, calculator needs to be attractive, but man, let me open that thing again. Wow, that is one scary-looking calculator. Uh, all right, let's uh, see what other programs are also installed that are not so obvious because they're not in the menu. Let me go back to the G parted. Uh, website here so let me pull up the browser all right so back to uh, gparted.org here so live CD USB yeah. okay graphical utilities some of the ones we saw the LX terminal PC man FM PC man FM is the file manager leafpad was a text editor yada 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 but some of the ones we didn't see command line utilities uh, FS archiver Part clone, part image, test disk, G part, grub, uh, MC, of course, Midnight Commander, we took a look at. Of course, we have Nano and Vim both installed for text editors, term terminal based text editors. We have parted, we have F disk, SF disk, G disk, SG disk. Uh, I don't see CF disk, that's one I, I sometimes like to use. Uh, it may be on there, they may have just not listed it. Um, you have uh, GPT Sync, we have SSH, of course, installed, Screen, Ping, RSync, Telnet, Traceroot, and BC. So that's some of what is installed here. Okay, so let me get back into the virtual machine here. I'm going to open up a terminal and I'm going to run HTOP just to check things out. HTOP is not installed, but Again, it's a Debian-based distro. You could sudo apt install htop or any program you need on the live system. It's just it's only there for that particular live session. You reboot, 
It's not going to be there. It's a one-time only thing. That's the same with all live USBs and live CDs. You're not actually installing anything to your physical hard drive, so or your physical flash drive or whatever you're running it on. So uh, I was going to take a look at memory usage, but I, I really didn't need a HTOP for that. I could just sudo free. Yeah, mem. I gave this virtual machine two gigs of RAM. It's using about a hundred megs. So again, but it's, it's again, this is a live USB or live CD. That may not matter too much for you, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the kernel. Um, Linux Debian 4.15.0 is the kernel. 4.15.0. So that is Gparted Live. Gparted Live 0.31.0-1. Uh, I've taken a look at one other live CD on the, the show before. A live uh, rescue CD anyway. And that was a Gentoo based live distribution called Sys System Rescue CD. It was really nice, System Rescue CD. If you're familiar with Gentoo, you you live in Gentoo or, or that Gentoo world, System Rescue CD would probably be where you want to be at. If you're much more comfortable dealing in a Debian world, then Gparted Live is probably where you want to be. Uh, closing out the show, one thing I would like to do is I would like to do a special thanks to all my patrons, all my Patreon supporters. I want to thank you guys. Ron Lee, Brian Lundu, Carl Schneider, Greg Chang, Carlos, Rob, Mark, Christian, Benjamin, Stephen, Marcus, Kevin, Bob. You guys, you're great. You guys help make this show possible. So I really wanted to thank you guys. And for everybody watching the channel, uh, please like, subscribe, share. Peace, guys. <laughs>